Hey, it's me, David, buddy. This is Sports News. I'm Joe Borg, and this is going to be a quick couple minute preview to the Colorado Avalanche versus the St. Louis Blues. As the St. Louis Blues had a great bounce back win last game, as Jordan Bennington got them to OT in game one. Where unfortunately for Blues fans, Josh Manson on that crazy play where Bennington fell over, making a couple of nice initial plays there like he did all night, but then not able to get back up, get square completely as he Manson was able to then shoot it over him as it looked like he was also, his eyes were taken away out front. That was game one. But in game two uh, for the Blues, they played to their strengths. In game one, I thought the Blues... The Avalanche played a very good game with the team that were very deservingly so deserved to win. They had over 50 shots. They had all the chances galore. And the Blues kind of got caught trying to play the Avalanche's game of keep up with the pace of play. Kind of get the offensive chances going, expedite your, cha expedite your pace through the neutral zone. That's not the Blues. That's the Avalanche. And the Blues got caught trying to play that style. And eventually it did them in as Jordan Bennington got them to OT. But then Manson was able to score. Now in game two, I thought the Blues played it. Tremendously great because Cairo was able to score on that nice wrist shot in the slot. David Perron was able to score on his first, which was on the 5-on-3. You can't be given the Blues, especially with a guy that can wire it like Perron, 5-on-3s. They did bounce back at this moment, though, to make it 2-1 to one early on in the third, which made it look like maybe Colorado was going to be able to mount a comeback in the game two. They were not, though, as Perron was able to get one through that Darcy Kemper will went back, and then Saj sealed it with an empty net. The reason I brought up the first two games going into this preview is the key to the Blues is play game two. Play to your strengths. Keep the team to the outside. You want to have your opponents anywhere between the 28 to 35 shot total at most because the Blues' strengths are being brute, being a very forceful team that kind of goes through you, skates through you, pounds you into the boards, wins most board battles, if not all of them. That's the strengths of the Blues. Now, one of the strengths of Colorado is also being very good in the board battles on top of every other thing that they're great at. But in Game 2... I thought the Blues won in that department. They were the tougher team. They were the more physical team. They were the team that started dominating the neutral zone, which is big for Greg Berube as well, dominate the neutral zone to be able to then have it going north as quickly as possible into the attacking zone. Basically, use your defense to create your offense, so to speak. Where the Colorado, they do that, but they also are just so good at their offense, it doesn't look as much like the Blues. Um, <clears throat> the, the the way that the Blues do it. Where the Blues, I think their keys to being able to win their first game at home is slam the neutral zone shut like they were able to do in Game 2. Don't let Colorado into the zone that easily. There was guys getting the puck over the blades of Colorado in about 2 to 3, 4, 5 seconds at most. Last game, they're going to need that. If Colorado comes out with the ante that they came out with in Game 1 on the road trying to bounce back from their first playoff loss this year after sweeping Nashville and winning Game 1, well, I don't think the Blues have much of a chance in those games. At that point, it's going to be all like game one, where it's going to be all on the goaltender Bennington's shoulders because the Blues can't play a pace of play, keep the pace the highest at all times level of game. That's going to screw them over against the Avalanche. The Avalanche can play that game. The difference is, which is why I still pick the Avalanche in this series when I pick them, is the Avalanche can kind of, because of their how stacked their team is, the Blues also have a lot of depth. But the Avalanche with the ridiculous... Overall uh, depth they have of star star depth, I guess is the way to put it. They can kind of stack and rotate their team a little bit more than the Blues can to give a couple of throw-offs, where that's what Barubi also did well in Game 2. He mixed up his lines. Well, I would look to Bednor if he doesn't get the offense like Game 1, where they were actually able to push it, and it was all Bennington keeping them at two goals until the third goal by Manson OT. I see him mixing it up more than he did last game as well. So then it's going to be on the Blues to counteract that and be able to bounce back. But I do think if the Blues want to have an upset in this series and have one of the bigger upsets of the 2022 Stanley Cup playoffs, it's about taking this game. If they take this game, my percentages, I'm not switching who I picked for the series yet at all, but for one game, but my percentages would definitely switch. Where now, I would say, at most, <clears throat> the Blues, like, the, the, the Blues basically took it to, I would say, the Colorado coming into the series it was 80-20 just because of the Blues experience. I gave them a 20% chance of being able to beat Colorado. That might have sparked up because of last game. If they can continue to play at that style to maybe 22-23, where I would assume that they win this game and really play to the game two St. Louis Blues round and pound them style, I might move that up to, say, 25, 26, 27. But it's like all just moving up slowly is basically what I'm saying. It's not like if they win this game, I'm all of a sudden saying, oh my God, the Blues are going to win this series. But this is one of those series for me in conclusion that 
I usually when I pick a winner of a series, sometimes I do that based off analysis, and it's more the other team is actually the team I want to win, like the Florida series, for example. But with this one, it, it's kind of a coin for me because seeing Chief win again would be awesome for me. I'm a Flyers fan, so getting to see a guy from there and Braden Shen continue to do his thing. David Perron's one of my favorite uh, goal scorers in the league and puck hounders, so it would be nice to see that. But then Colorado, you have Nathan McKinney. You got uh, Mika Radinen, who's great. You got Cal McCarr. So uh, Darcy Kemper's one of my favorite goalies in my lifetime. So, I mean, it's kind of like a lose or a a um, win-win for me, I guess, and not a lose-lose situation is what I should say. But that is just a quick <laughs> tidbit um, aside at the end here. Please continue to subscribe down below or above on the YouTube widget. This has been a preview to the Blues versus the Avalanche Game 3. Peace out, everybody, and stay safe.